Last but not least, our last speaker of the evening is Dr. Thomas Hochstadt. We are, um, well, I have to mention this, we're uh, making a bit of an experiment now because we never tried to have a remote speaker through Skype. He's a senior lecturer at the University of Texas. And he was the first to develop an online course for virtual reality as a language and as an art form. And he's also the <laughs> author of two VR-related books in which he shows the integral relationship between VR and film music. This evening, he will lead us into a provocative deep dive into the nature of media, felt meaning, and our relationship to both, as well as the use of VR as the first intellectual discipline that uses the body in the search of knowledge. Please welcome Tom. Thank you and good evening. It's a, a good looking audience. I'm delighted to have this opportunity. Gabby gave me the, op the uh, choice of either sitting down or standing up. Well, I've been a symphony conductor my whole life, and so the only way I can think is standing up. So I'm grateful for that. Today, my life is coming around to me in full circle. My journey with music and virtual reality began several years ago as a student in the Vienna Academy of Music, I believe in the same building where you are right now. And in that moment, I began my career as a conductor. And I became even more aware of the concerts of other conductors, both in Europe and the United States. Now, many of these concerts were life-changing, but amazingly, in many of them, I'm not sure quite how to say this, except to say nothing happened. Even with the same famous conductors, the same famous orchestras, the same famous music, everything was perfect, all the notes were in the right tradition and so forth, still, for some reason, in some concerts, nothing happened. And I wondered why. Why would one concert move me to tears and another concert, just as perfect and professional, leave me cold. Well, the search for this answer became my life's journey. And I finally found, I believe, what I've looked for. So today's return to Vienna, to where it all began, is both meaningful and fulfilling. Now, you already know that the theme of this uh, meetup is imagine. So let me try a few. Just imagine that virtual reality is already redirecting civilization and that the whole of civilization is now migrating toward virtual space. Or try this one. Just imagine that VR is not quite what we thought it was and that we have just discovered its unknown language. Or just imagine that VR has overturned centuries of so-called correct thinking, and that with VR, the very structure of knowing is changing, not what we know, but how we know. Or try this one. Just imagine that we finally realize that within VR, the medium is not the message, and that we finally realize VR is more than an exciting trip. Or finally, just imagine that we have discovered an autonomous or separate force within VR. And because of this separate force, VR will never submit totally to our control. So how can I say these things? How can I be so bold to make statements like that? Well, first of all, because I have spent my life as a musician and I have found that music and VR share the same definition. Music is the intuitive, non-literal language of juxtaposition. Participation in this language is immersive and interactive, and the result is felt meaning. Now, a little bit later on, I'll talk a little bit about juxtaposition. But for right now, let me give you the definition of virtual reality. 
Virtual reality is the intuitive, non-literal language of juxtaposition. Participation in this language is immersive and interactive, and the result is felt meaning. In other words, they both have the same definition from my perspective. Now, I'm excited for those of you who are working with VR as a technology. Just consider what you've already heard tonight. Wonders are just around the corner. But I have studied VR as a language and as an art form. With or without technology, I believe the definition I just shared with you holds true. So, what does this mean? What does it mean for VR? Whether inside or outside of technology. Most of us are already familiar with the intuitive and non-literal functions of VR. And everyone agrees that VR is immersive and interactive. So I would like to focus on the less familiar language of juxtaposition and the resulting felt meaning. First, I'll describe how the language of juxtaposition works, but perhaps more important, I'll describe later how it does not work, what prevents it from working. The language of juxtaposition is simply placing two things together that don't go together. And the tension or the conflict between them points to a third reality beyond the juxtaposition itself. In the ancient metaphor, time flies, we know time, the passing of, day, passing of days, for example, and we know flight, the wonder of birds, but how these two known experiences can be put together remains unknown. No matter how much you analyze it, the tension in this metaphor remains a mystery. As example, our brief moment on Earth is more than logical thinking, figuring it out logically. The metaphor time flies takes our breath away. It measures our own mortality, the brief moment of our lives here on Earth. The ancient Greeks called what I'm talking about prosopon, meaning a face facing a face. The resulting tensions between these opposing faces pointed to a third reality or radical otherness, which they called the geist, the pneuma, or the spirit of truth. Now, juxtapositions can be put together from endless combinations. The tension, for example, between the known and the unknown. The tension between the familiar and the unfamiliar. The expected and the unexpected. The relevant and the irrelevant. The list goes on and on and on. Obviously, this is a different type of thinking. It finds its power on the ruins of rationality. It's an open-ended, deepening cycle, much like a kaleidoscope with endless points of view. I guess to kind of summarize what I'm talking about here, with today's juxtapositions in VR, permissible knowledge and forbidden knowledge are jumping into bed together. Now, VR is not possible without emotions, feelings, and senses. VR, in other words, requires an embodied mind, a mind that is in the body and pulling out knowledge from the whole body. But here's the forbidden part. If you move your emotions, feelings, and senses into the language of juxtaposition, you are combining feelings that cannot be combined, like happiness and sadness at the same time. But African Americans joyfully celebrate the same music in which they grieved during slavery. And that grieving is still part of their celebration. Or consider the uh, American country western singer who usually sings, I hurt real bad, but it feels so good. Obviously, music easily sets a mood. That's what it does. There are three basic moods that form not only music, but also they form the very story of being a human being as well. Those three moods, and you can use any number of different words, I select these. Struggle, assurance or hope, and celebration. And of course, within these three moods, there are 
almost endless variations. Now, when music becomes an art, when it becomes the language of juxtaposition, it sets up a dramatic conflict between opposing moods. Usually, the conflict is between two of these three basic moods. But this is really quite interesting. The most meaningful moments in music come from the combination of all three moods at the same time. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's really powerful. My granddaughter, when she was young, her name is Sarah, she asked me once, Granddad, why is beautiful music so painful? Now we know. Let's look at what this dramatic conflict uh, suggests for film music. Film music must do more than simply provide continuity or intensify the action. It must do more than merely mimic the story. Considering the inherent power of juxtaposition, there may be moments when film music should even go against the visual drama, oppose the visual drama. If you want real power, that's the greatest power. Juxtaposition within a film should not only be going on within a single art form like music, but also between the art forms within the movie. Drama, visual art, poetry, choreography, and of course music. As a result, we experience hundreds, get ready, even thousands of juxtapositions in the same moment. With the logical mind, impossible. That can't you can't even get a hold of it. But with emotions, feelings, and senses of the intuitive, embodied mind, these combined felt meanings feel quite natural, easily to, easy to assimilate. Here's another surprise. We've been told that the medium is the message. But with authentic VR, authentic the way I look at it, with authentic VR, that's not true. The medium is not the message. The tension in a juxtaposition points beyond itself. It represents something not there. Meaning is realized through it, but not in it. Henry Miller would have said it this way, VR in the form of art is only a means to life, to the life more abundant. It is not in itself the life more abundant. We confirm this when we watch a movie. We are not interested in what the producers, writers, or te technicians think. <laughs> Sorry. We only want to know what the story is saying. Here's why this is important. Virtual reality has got to be more than a carnival ride or a squirt of dopamine. The felt meanings that juxtapositions point to are not merely felt. They are, also provide meaning and insight or inspiration. Well, here's one more surprise. VR is not a monologue. monologue. In other words, it's not a one-way statement. It's a dialogue. It's a conversation. And here's the way it works. We boldly create juxtapositions holding side-by-side -side things that don't go together. If the juxtapositions are already, are already there, then we simply contrast other art forms or other senses against the original image. For example, what would the story be like if it were a dance? What would the story be like if it were poetry? What would it be like if it, if it were music or a painting? In other words, we compare things that cannot be compared. This dialogue is a give and take, back and forth movement between the interactive participant and the realm of what we might call mystery. And with each dialogue, the meaning deepens. This is where we begin seeing the familiar turning strange, and the strange turning familiar. And sooner or later, the dialogue begins speaking to our own destiny. Now, I promise to tell you when juxtaposition does not work. The show stops when one side of the juxtaposition overpowers the, uh, overpowers the other, totally erasing the tension. 
in the juxtaposition between the known and unknown, for example, if the known simply takes over with a bunch of tiresome cliches and dead metaphors, the whole experience becomes boring. On the other hand, if the unknown turns toward total chaos, overpowering the known, then again the tension in the juxtaposition is destroyed. In other words, juxtaposition is neither the candle nor the wick. It's the burning. A more typical failure comes when juxtapositions point only to themselves. We see this with entertainers where the juxtaposition simply says, look at me, look at me. Now, after all of this I've shared with you, even if we could get everything right, there is even a still bigger problem. As I, as I said before, VR is not possible without emotions, feelings, and senses. Now that wouldn't seem like a problem, but emotions have not always been friendly to us. Some emotions can destroy us. Take road rage as, a, as an example, where drivers turn their cars into weapons. I, I was wondering if you have road rage in Vienna. I think I remember some, as a matter of fact. Or if you're not that kind of a driver, when was the last time you hurt a loved one needless, needlessly by something you've said? The destructive selfishness of most emotions explains why most schools insist on critical thinking, logical, rational thinking, and why they refuse emotions and feelings and senses. That's a big problem in terms of acceptance of VR itself. But there's an answer to this criticism. The ancient Hebrews agreed with the ancient Greeks that emotions can become problems. The Hebrews, however, knew a second set of emotions that were necessary for finding beauty, meaning, and inspiration. The solution, they said, was to know the difference, and they did just that. I wrote a book on this subject. Of everything I've said so far, the next may, may be the most shocking. If <laughs> I feel like I've said a few shocking things already. VR is more powerful than we have realized. Those who are working in the technical part of VR often describe how powerful it is. And you have to admit, the latest VR technology can be powerful. But for a moment, let's just set aside the technology. In powerful music, we cannot control the language that lies beyond the music itself. Or take novelists. Novelists often report that the characters in their books live a life of their own, and they can't be easily jerked around. Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote, for example, I could not control the story. It wrote itself. And other artists have reported it didn't come from me. It came out of the clear blue sky, and I was totally surprised. I think probably most of us can report similar experiences. But let's take the next step. If authentic VR leads to a dialogue rather than a monologue, with what or with whom are we dialoguing? I call this an autonomous force. It's a separate force that's not ours. We do not have complete control over it. So let me just pause for a second. If the experience, experiences I've described so far are authentic, then we are dealing with very serious make-believe. Very serious make-believe. I believe it's a power far greater than technology. I understand the importance of using VR for, for training, uh, for tourism, and various kinds of business ventures. Uh, that's really going to be helpful and necessary. But history is moving too fast. Tomorrow we will suddenly see that everything has changed. 
Today's many trends are like frightened horses that fly off in a gallop toward the edge of a cliff, wanting to stop, yet knowing they cannot stop. VR provides a world where being deceived usually plays a greater role than be being enlightened. With these illusions that we commonly share, a trip taken anywhere out of the world can lead to hell just as likely as to paradise. In a virtual world, seraph and snake live side by side. There are no rules, no safety net. And we need to remind ourselves we're very easy to fool and very open to dangers. We're not ready for this. VR is moving too fast and too powerfully. While sanity demands answers, our schools don't have the skills or the facts to confirm our answers. Yet, we've got to get there before history gets there. VR can either save us or destroy us. In the modern world, people desperately hunger for meaning. So what should matter most with those working in VR is not the experience, but the meaning. The ancient Hebrews had a word for what I've shared today. They called it Dama. It would be translated today as virtual reality. They said it is the very voice of God. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was a beautiful and enlightening uh, talk. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very Jackie. much for being with us. Do you hear? Uh, do, do you hear me? Um, do you hear I us? I hear you well. Okay, perfect. Um, we're going to start a round of uh, a Q and A now. Yeah, that'd be great. So wait. Um, are there any questions for Tom? <laughs> I know it's 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 a very deep uh, topic. Um, we covered. Uh, the tech, we cover the half and half, <laughs> the world of the producer, and we cover the philosophic aspect of VR, that this is something that we don't talk too much too, too often. And as Tom said, it's, it's important to have the combination of the three of them to make meaningful experience, or not, not to make them o only, but also to experience them in, in, a, in a deeper level. So. I have a, I have some questions on my own actually, and uh, that I would like to. Go to right ask. ahead. Um, you've mentioned, uh, and I, I personally agree. I, I don't know where to look, but I, I don't know, like, well, you, know, you see my face right there, here. but. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned, and I personally agree that VR is more powerful than we realized. Keeping this in mind, how can we learn how to use the power of VR responsibly? In your opinion. Well, that, that's a very profound question. Uh, if authentic, uh, we don't use it. We allow it. And then in allowing it, we have a choice. Thank goodness we have a choice. That's one, one thing we have a choice about. We can either accept it or we can reject it. We have to raise the question, is this harmful or is it helpful? Are we victims or are we victors? It makes a difference. Some of, uh, some of my young friends, uh, they, they think uh, if a VR experience is crazy enough and wild enough and dangerous enough, they must be having fun. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> and question? Um, thank you for that. Could you give us some specific examples? Because you've spoken very much in the abstract about VR, um, yet you haven't mentioned any specific sequences, games, or any tip different types of VR. Could you be a bit more specific about positive and negative examples of what you're talking about? Well, uh, that's an important question. I'd like to suggest something you probably already, already know. Uh, VR has been with us since the beginning of time. I mean, cave paintings uh, are VR. Uh, VR is an art form, just like uh, the other art forms. It's, uh, it's a blank slate 
that emphasizes uh, being immersive and interactive to a profound level, which is going to be uh, opening many doors that we haven't uh, opened before. Uh, but let me say that I love reading novels. Uh, I bring home three or four at a time. And when I re read a novel, uh, it's real. It's real. There, there, are, no, there are no goggles, uh, no gloves. Uh, I'm actually there. I'm there for sure. Now, I may be a little bit weird, but uh, I'm there. And so uh, I, I see tremendous possibilities in what can be done with uh, the technology, uh, virtual reality technology. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know this. You probably know this, but I'll state it anyway. The Greeks used the word technology. That's where we got the word technology is from the Greeks. And their definition of technology was the study of art. So that's, that's pretty much where I'm coming from, is the study of art. And uh, the building blocks of all the arts are very simple, down to the smallest one note, or whatever it might be, of metaphors and juxtaposition. Those are the building blocks. And those same building blocks are part of virtual reality as a technology. And within virtual reality as a technology, you, you still have the, the same uh, uh, two sides coming together that don't go together, the known and the unknown, the familiar and the unfamiliar, the expected and the unexpected, the relevant and the irrelevant, the ordinary and the odd, the beautiful and the ugly, struggle and hope, so forth. I mean, it's just an endless slate of possibilities as far as exploring meaning as well as the, the the amazing things within technology. And then, of course, you just take what you've got and you create juxtapositions and dialogue with the juxtapositions that are already there. And as you dialogue, the experience goes deeper and deeper and deeper and, and just it, it provides the meaning that everyone is searching for. But with respect, your definition of VR is so amazingly broad it seems to me that you're talking about imagination and that p basically all forms of painting, Western painting, perspectival painting, cinema, are for you a form of VR. Whereas I think what we're talking about is a specific technology which is going beyond all of those forms. Well, what you're talking about is exploration. And art, if it's done right, is exploration. You remember a moment ago I talked about going to concerts, and uh, some concerts by great orchestras, great conductors, and so forth, are, are life-changing. But then the same, same musicians, same conductors, and so forth, sometimes it's just plain boring. Nothing happens. No meaning at all. And this, this takes place in all forms of VR, including the technology part. Right. Well, I, I, I think it would be very interesting for you to give some feedback on some of the specific VR products, but since we haven't produced a lot of those, I can see that this is a, a difficult cycle. Because basically, I think that VR, the definition is you need to have goggles um, on, and it's, you know, your sense is, in a sense, totally immersed, and that's what I understand as being virtual reality as a technology, not just a oh. painting or a cinema piece or a piece of music. What, what you're working toward is profound uh, immersiveness and profound interaction. I think, that my, please understand, I'm not an expert on VR as a technology, but as I see what's going on, uh, people are, are exploring uh, how to be more immersive, how to be more, more interactive. And uh, as time goes along, uh, you'll, you'll find that some of the technology is like in, in history, some of the technology we've had in the past has been left alone. It's, it was done, and then it's over with. And then history and science move on to the next step. So where we are right now is just amazing. I encourage everyone who's doing it, and uh, just realize that our goal is not to wear a goggle. Our goal is something beyond that.
Any more questions? Well, I will go. I will go with another question. Uh, sorry, I was hiding from you here. Okay. <laughs> it's a, a, a bit confusing for me. I'm a yeah. bit make, old school make for this. Make well. your question easier than the others. <laughs> Okay, I, I will try because I'm also a, a bit of a philosopher <laughs> myself on my spare time. <laughs> um, the search for meaning gets permanently grounded by, our, by, by the world that we can observe. We can observe the world and then we make a meaning out of it. As soon as we diverge into multitudes of VR universes, we have so many options now to choose from. So, will the search for common meaning still make sense? Or will the plurality of felt meaning help us to understand maybe a deeper level of common meaning for our lives? What is your position in, 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 this, in this regard? That's good, that's good. Well, uh, I, I need to say that uh, virtual reality is a different kind of thinking. Uh, it does not provide one single final answer like most of our other disciplines in the university. Uh, VR deals in patterns, and the many patterns point to what you might call an underlying truth. Uh, you could almost call it a, a common denominator. And uh, uh, we, we're just going to have to learn to go with the flow with a different kind of learning, a different kind of knowing uh, when dealing with virtual reality. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Tom. We are, I'm afraid that we are a bit um, over time <laughs> right now. I, I want to know, where do I get my popcorn? <laughs> we ate it all. <laughs> I, I can smell it. <laughs> Actually, we couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> but I, I, I will sure send you some <laughs> to, you the, to, to the land far, far away <laughs> that you are right now. <laughs> thank you. So yes, thank you so much, Tom, for uh, the, the very interesting talk you gave us and the everything, I mean, for being uh, with us uh, this evening. And for us, at least, and I'm sorry, I will change my perspective now. <laughs> <to> thank <laughs> and for, I, for us, that is uh, it for today. Uh, we hope you enjoy the evening as much as we did. <laughs> Hello. <And laughs> We are, yeah, in a lot of places at the same time today. That's really cool. <laughs> and yes, I mean, we, what else? What else? A lot of pictures and videos have been taken today. And of course, we're going to upload it to our social media channels, but just give us a little bit of time uh, to upload them. And we are going to keep you informed when and where and if and whatever they are going to be online. And you're going to be linked to it. <laughs> exactly. And also we we want to tell you a bit more about the, the dynamics of our events. I mean, we uh, usually we make an event every two months uh, with this format that, that um, you are seeing right now. Um, but we have uh, some surprises lined up for, for all of you. I mean, we have some uh, new uh, type of events that we are going to be experimenting <laughs> with, <laughs> with all of you. So stay tuned for more. Visit us on uh, our social media channels. And, and experiments won't hurt. They, they exactly. don't this, want this won't not hurt. going this to hurt. hurt. No, <laughs> this one hurts, but the others, no. And yeah, I mean. Yeah, and still I want to remind you of Victor, our guest book. Um, he's outside nearby the bar, where else? Um, and uh, please give us your feedback. You can also give you us uh, your feedback on the social media channels and to make it a little bit fancy, talk to us. That could be also possible because we are there and we are there, we, we're going to meet you at Fry, <laughs> hopefully. Yes, we're also going to meet you at Fry that we invite you again to come. Uh, or at the Experience Corner. And also the Experience Corner. Yeah. I mean, you should visit now the Experience Corner to have a taste of VR, to get ready to have a, a cider and to have some drinks and to have some popcorn. There's a lot of popcorn, so please eat popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we would have to use it as pillows tonight. I don't know what we're going to do with all this popcorn. <laughs> and uh, yeah. what we also have to say, 
Um, we could not make this event without a lot of people standing behind us. We're just the two of us standing here. So therefore, there are a lot of people helping us or making this event happen that, that you can enjoy it this way. So I just want to, okay, you have the choice to come up to the stage to us or to just raise your hands and give a sign. Over there is one, over there just sitting and yeah. typing. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> there was a the lady. <laughs> so thanks to our, uh, give a applause well. to our Rio Rihanna team. And yes, that's it. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy the rest of the evening. And thanks.